Hi there, I'm the Rookie Woodworker, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about a question that comes up all the time. And that's usually coming from new woodworkers or people who are looking to get into the hobby. And they often ask something like this. Name five tools that you would recommend me to buy. And they seem like simple questions, but they're really quite complex. And that's because, one, I have no idea what, what budget you're working with. The budget can make a huge difference in the tool selection that I would tell you to get. And two, I have no idea what you want to make. I mean, you got to tell me what you want to make, and I'll tell you what tools you need for it. But anyway, I'm planning on putting a, a rather large investment into this shop over the next year. So I want to kind of move on from rookie woodworker tools myself to uh, semi-professional tools. Um, so I thought right now would be the perfect time to take a moment and to do a shop tour video that way you can see what this rookie woodworkers shop actually looks like and what I'm working with. I'm going to go over uh, some different tools that I've bought over the years that have turned out to be completely useless, some some big waste of money here and there, some stuff that I, I've never used that I ended up buying and uh, I'll go over uh, some stuff that's been absolutely awesome in this shop and some, some stuff that I, I wish uh, was a little bit better right now. Um, but yeah, uh, the best I can do here is to try to teach you through my experiences and then basically let you make your own decisions on what you want to buy. And, and yeah, so let's get to it. So the first place I want to start is the heart of my shop. And that is the table saw. Yeah, this thing is actually the heart of my shop. It's the most important tool in my shop. It's the most used tool in my shop. Um, and it is tiny, this little, I call it my Barbie Playhouse table saw because it's it don't look like something that would be a tool, but believe me, it is dangerous. Uh, <laughs> and and because of how chintzy and cheap it is, that's, that's a big part of why it's dangerous. As you can see, it kind of wobbles around a good bit. It, it's lightweight, so when I go pushing some bigger material through it, I, uh, I have to strap some weights to it to hold it in place or else the, the bigger material ends up trying to push it over. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's super cheap. I bought this a long time ago before I even got into the hobby. Um, it was just something I bought to get some stuff done around the house as I needed to. Um, but, but yeah, this thing dates back probably 10, 12 years, something like that. And back when I got it, it was about $130. So it was super cheap. But the thing is still alive. I've, I've worn out probably half a dozen blades on this thing, so it has definitely been used um, and abused. But uh, yeah, for as junky of a table saw as it is, it has been pretty good to me, so I can't complain about it too much, but it, it is kind of a danger in my shop because of how, how chintzy it is. Um, and, and I have actually hurt myself on it before, which is something that I learned early on in woodworking was whenever I was cutting pieces and I was setting the cut pieces over here on the other side. And then I kept on doing that and then reaching across and as I'm working and then eventually one time I reached across and my finger just touched the blade just enough so that it took a chunk of fingernail and a little bit of the nail bed with it. But fortunately it was just a pretty much a warning shot to let me know to take it seriously. And, and I have ever since then taken it very seriously. Um, but yeah, fortunately the finger, everything grew back like, like it never even happened. Um, yeah, yeah, lessons learned there. With the nature of the table saw, I figured I should get a little bit into some safety equipment, some PPE or personal protective equipment uh, for the next topic. And that one of the important things I learned after the table saw incident was to uh, have yourself a first aid kit available in the shop because so you never know when you're going to need it. I, I probably should have a little bit bigger of a first aid kit with some more uh, heavy duty stuff just in case something goes seriously wrong. But uh, for now I got this little kit here. Um, another big one is safety glasses. I've got these safety glasses all through this shop. I've got about a dozen pair of these and I just kind of put them everywhere. That way, there's no reason not to have them. You know, it, it's, 
they're everywhere. They're, they're within arm's reach anywhere I work. And then I also have a couple grinding shields that are placed throughout the shop. Um, they're pretty handy too. And then uh, a thing that a lot of people don't think about when they get into the hobby of woodworking is a dust mask. And you do need this. Some of the, the stuff that you you cut up, some of the particle boards or the MDF and stuff, um, there's a lot of stuff in that that you do not want to be breathing into your lungs and it can cause some long-term damage. So uh, wear one of these. This is the first one that I bought and I, I, I still like it, but whenever I wear it for long periods of time, uh, it, it, it builds up some condensation and sometimes that condensation builds up so much that it starts running out and dripping onto pieces when I'm sanding and stuff. So it's kind of like gross. Um, the second one I bought was one of these. They have a, uh, a filter in the middle here that I probably should change out. Um, and then they kind of wrap around your head pretty well. They're really comfortable and they're super effective. They have a nice tight seal around your face. I, uh, I definitely like them. I don't even know what the brand is. Uh, Phi Tech or Fight Tech. Kicking Soul. That's kind of a cool name. Um, yeah. Another little Amazon purchase. Um, and then hearing protection. Save your ears, man. Don't uh, don't burn them out. That's there's nothing else to that. You want to hear the grandkids whenever you get older, right? So, so yeah, protect your ears. Um, and then with the nature of the table saw, I got an array of push sticks. Um, you got the cheap little push sticks that tend to come with tools, and they they slip on the wood and don't really work too well. But they they're a push stick. They do their jobs. So I got. <clears throat> One of these little guys, which is a gripper that has these little things that hang out the bottom that uh, that help that, that get behind a piece and then pushes it along so that it don't slip. The uh, rubber pads, like everybody likes to claim that they actually grip the wood. They do a little better than this one, but they're still going to slip. Um, I do have one of the fancier ones where you can adjust the middle so that the blade goes down through the middle and you still end up cutting your stuff up because you're an idiot like myself um but anyway yeah i got one of those too and of course you get the other cheap sticks but these ones are actually pretty handy i i still use these to this day this one here came with the table saw and uh you see me like 10 years later i still have it still using it and then i also made one too um I actually have a video available on how to make it. It's super simple. You probably don't need any instruction, but it's there just in case. Um, but yeah, that's this one here is probably my favorite one because it both holds down the piece and pushes it along pretty well. So it's kind of like this one, except for it's longer. So you, you get the, the luxury of holding it down across the distance while pushing it along. And then it keeps your hand nice and far away from the blade as you push it through. It's pretty nice, that's the idea, right? And this one here is my miter saw. It's a sliding Dewalt saw with a 12 inch blade. Um, this thing here is one of the most used tools in my shop too. Right now I have it set up for zero clearance cuts so that uh, I don't have any tear out in my cuts. I think I explained that in one of my previous videos as well, what this setup does. Um, I started out with a cheap Craftsman. It was a 10 inch saw. It did not have a sliding feature at all. And, and that one there also was a, a buyback when I bought the table saw. It was 10, 12 years ago just to get stuff done around the house. You know, one of them things that you, you need if you do things yourself. Um, and that one there did the job just fine for quite a while. And then uh, I decided I wanted this because I wanted the added cut capability because with the sliding feature and the bigger blade I'm able to cut much bigger pieces now it's made a world of difference um, but the, but the original craftsman saw that was that there was like a hundred and thirty dollar purchase back then I, I think today the similar saws are around 150 bucks so uh, yeah yeah getting a good miter saw is not that difficult um, not that hard of a of a thing to acquire um, I do not have a miter station for this thing built yet. Someday I will do that and I will post that build video up here on YouTube for you all to check it out. Um, but right now, yeah, I just have it resting on my workbench. 
And this here is my workbench. Uh, this is pretty much a homemade workbench. Well, it is a wor homemade workbench, um, just like any other woodworker. Uh, we like to make our own workbenches and, and make them our own. Um, it uh, has two by eight joining together to make the top. One of these days I'm going to redo the top to make it thicker um, and drill some holes through it so that I can use dog clamps on this bench. I think that would be pretty cool. Or put a T-track system on it. Uh, people that have T-track systems built into their bench, that seems to be pretty awesome. Uh, a little bit jealous here of those guys. Um, so I might end up doing something like that in the future. Um, this here is a hardware cabinet, um, and I kind of have a bunch of Craig stuff thrown in there. Uh, then I have my sandpaper cabinet here um, that has all different types of sandpaper. My hardware cabinet, I actually have a video on how to build this. It's actually my first video that uh, that I ever uh, posted here on, on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, there's a build video for that, and then I have another cabinet on the back side that's for all of my air tools and stuff like that. Um, that's the second build video that I posted on YouTube. Uh, you can find that there too. It's a, that's a pretty cool cabinet. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with the, the build for the whole table. Um, you might notice that there's a wheel system over there. Um, I wanted to be able to lift the table up on wheels and then move it around. Uh, and when I originally made this, I didn't have all these cabinets and wasn't storing like hundreds of pounds of stuff here and had a 90 pound saw that was sitting on top of it all the time. Um, so those wheels are a little bit tough to use right now in its current configuration. It, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely heavy to put it there and it's going to be heavy to lift it up to, to get it there. But I'm going to give it a try. It's been a while since I did it, so I might... I think I'm gonna try it. All right, let's see if I can do this. This is gonna be heavy. Get your game face on, Earl. Come on. Woo! I got it up. Heck yeah. All right, well, let's try the other side. <laughs> All right. Come on. One more time. Well, moves around pretty decent. Yeah. Man, I have not cleaned under there in forever. So, that back. And then it has uh, like these pull handles that basically pull back on this so that you can pull them out and release it and set it back down. But with how heavy it is, it's kind of hard to multi. There it is. Whew. I'll do this side. This side here is going to be the heavy side. And we're back. Whew. So yeah, that's how that works. Then there's this little area here that's kind of become a catch-all for all sorts of junk that I uh, work with at the bench because... I'm terribly disorganized. If there's anything I could recommend, it's to be a little more organized than I am. But I, I want to talk about a few of the things that I that you'll find here. Like one of them will be um, utility knives. I got like 10 of these and I scatter them out throughout the shop. That way they're everywhere that I'll need one of these. And it's been super helpful. Also pencils. Um, these things here, I bought like a pack of 50 of them and I scattered them out through the shop, through the house, through my, my room where I do a lot of my finishing work and stuff. Yeah, that's also one of the things I, I, I totally recommend doing that. Buy like 50 of them and scatter them out everywhere. That way you don't waste a bunch of time looking for pencils. Um, of course, I have some tapes and I got flashlights. I bought a pack of a bunch of cheap flashlights and did the same thing, scattered them out all over the place. And of course, safety glasses, like I mentioned before, they're everywhere. Um, but yeah, yeah, a couple of things like that. Um, buy a bunch of them. 
and then just put them everywhere. That way you don't spend a bunch of time searching for them. Um, scissors are the same way. I got a pair of scissors everywhere too. Um, yeah. Also found my uh, picture frame. It's like a staple gun thing. It staples these little uh, tabs in the back of your picture frame to hold your pictures into the picture frames. Um, I think I have some uh, some footage of me using this. I'll have to look for that and try to put it up here so that you can see how this thing works. But it's if you get into doing picture frames, this here is definitely worth it. It's a really good buy there. Yeah, this is kind of like my collection of crazy stuff. Um, I planned on getting into more cabinetry, and this stuff here seems to be pretty awesome for cabinetry, but I've only used this stuff about like one time. I haven't done nearly as much cabinetry as I've dreamed of doing. Um, but if you're, if you're going to do a bunch of cabinetry, this stuff is awesome. It is great stuff. But uh, if you're going to be like me and use it once, uh, probably can do without, really. Now, before I get to talking about my planner, I wanted to talk about this thing, which you probably can't recognize it in its current state, but this is a planner as well. It is a old central machinery planner, two and a half horsepower. It's one of the cheap lunchbox planners that you can get on the market. It, I think at the time when I bought it, it was the cheapest one that I could find, uh, somewhere in a 200 and some dollar range. Um, but the thing about it is, is about a little bit after it came time to change the blades on this thing, um, the gears that run the rollers, that the feeder rollers, stripped out. And it turns out it has plastic gears in there. And they just broke off. Um, so that's pretty much just a, uh, a, a glue-up weight. You could yeah, put it on something that you're gluing together and... It'll hold it down. That's about all it's good for right now. I'm sure that I can probably order some parts for it and maybe get that thing fixed up. But right now, it's useless. Not, I don't. I don't see a need to do that. I, did, I didn't want to do that just for it to break again. That about the time I need to change the next set of blades. So I upgraded, and we'll talk about that. And this is where the Dewalt 735 enters the chat. This is kind of my big, my first big purchase in the shop, which. I consider it to be a big purchase as far as what my budget is. Um, some people, I guess it's chump change, but for me, this was a big deal. Um, I got it with the the in-feed and out-feed tables, uh, which have been great. I really like that. It's, it's helped out a little bit with the snipe if you set them up correctly. Um, these things will create a ton of dust. So if you don't have a dust collection system, you're definitely going to want to wear your, your dust mask whenever you're using this. Same thing with your table saw and your miter saw too. If you don't have a dust collection system to them, they're going to create a bunch of dust too. But this guy right here, it really makes it. So yeah, wear your, wear your respirator whenever you're, you're uh, running this thing and things will be cool. But this thing has made a big difference in, in what I can do and what I can't do in the shop. It, it, it really, uh, uh, ups my capabilities. So yeah, this one here, I, right now, I couldn't live without it. Now what we have here is my first jointer, and I hate it. This jointer here, whenever I bought it, it was basically the cheapest jointer on the market at the time. I believe it was the cheapest jointer, one of the cheapest jointers anyway. Huh. Seems like I've said that before. But anyway, <clears throat> it's a shop fox, and, uh, and it worked great for a period of time that I used it. And then this table here went a little bit out of level and I started getting having a harder time getting bigger panels to glue up and not have a seam. Um, and what I found out was is how hard it is to level this table. You have to like basically disassemble the table, pull it off, flip it upside down, and then this suspension under there you got to adjust the screws on it and then put it back all back together and then see if the adjustment you made was correct and it was totally uneconomical way of adjusting the table it, it took hours on top of hours to get this thing right um so that now after doing that one time i decided i didn't want to ever do it again so the next time it kind of worked its way a little bit out of level 
I bought a new one, and I, I don't even know why I still have this thing. I need to get rid of it, to be honest with you. Just, just get rid of the damn thing. So I pretty much immediately upgraded to this thing. Um, this one was cost about twice as much as what the Shop Fox was, which Shop Fox was about $300, somewhere in that range, um, which for me, it, that was a lot of money, you know. This thing here was about $600, so it was another expensive buy for me, um, but it's eight inches wide, so I can throw a bigger material at it. It's got these longer extended, these bars that extend the table length so that I can, it, it's nicer for running longer pieces across it. It's got a helical cutter head um, and it's got these four holes here, which have screws that adjust the table from the top. Like really simple, I just pull out a screw, adjust the, another set screw in there, and then I screw that down tight, and then I'm able to check my uh, level in comparison to the other table. It's super easy and super nice to work with, which I love that. But the dust collection is kind of bad on this machine, especially if you're not running a vacuum on it. Um, it does not shoot chips out. It kind of just dumps them in the body, and that just fills up. So you need dust collection for this machine, or you just need to stop every once in a while and scoop that stuff out. But overall, I'm really happy with this machine. And I showed them like four tools and I'm already like super dusty. I gotta get a dust collection system and get, get this stuff knocked down. This is ridiculous. I can't even walk around out here without without getting dirty. Then there's this thing. It's my skill, nine inch bandsaw. I hate it. I don't know why I have it either. Um, so the first bandsaw that I bought, um, and I bought this quite a long time ago. At the time it was uh, about the cheapest bandsaw on the market. Um, it's, yeah, it's in the nine inch class. I think, I pretty much think anything in the nine or 10 inch class is nearly useless. Um, you could use this thing if you were cutting out, say, uh, like dollhouse stuff, like really small stuff. But if you're trying to rip down like three inch pieces of wood, like it, it seems to be capable of, but it, it's not. As soon as you push that piece of wood into it, it just stops dead in its tracks. Um, no setting that can make it better. It's just, it just don't have the power to uh, do much. But yeah, if you're working with really small stuff, I think this thing it could be useful for you. But for uh, what I'm doing with it, it's it's useless. Yeah, it's a it's a waste of money. But whatever, you would work and you learn, right? So with that in mind, I've upgraded to the 14 inch Wen bandsaw. Um, yeah, this thing's like the cheapest thing in its class, uh, but. It has been awesome. Like it can, you can feed it a lot of wood, and it and it does eat it. Um, but there's some things about it that it is cheap and chintzy, like the light that, whenever it starts moving, it starts vibrating down and don't hold itself up, or the the uh, the uh, fence that that moves around back and forth and up and down because the backside of it don't actually hold on to anything. It's just kind of loose and free to just hang out back there um but yeah overall i'm super stoked with this thing it has like some other things really increased my capabilities in my shop and uh yeah it's made me pretty happy a lot better than that nine inch piece of junk down there uh so yeah i'm pretty stoked with uh this addition to my shop and then there's uh drills i got cheap drills and then i got dewalt uh, i got a drill and a driver um yeah they, they both have different purposes and uh, I recommend getting both of them if you can. Um, being that these are Dewalt, like everybody with a Milwaukee uh, feels the need to tell me that theirs is better. So I'm going to go ahead and trust that and tell you guys that maybe a Milwaukee would be better than the Dewalt. I have the Dewalt, uh, but uh, apparently this is inferior to Milwaukee. So uh, yeah. yeah. The choice is yours before you go buying yourself into these. Go ahead and look at Milwaukee. 
Now let's talk about clamps for a while. Now this clamps is where you can waste a ton of money on clamps. And I definitely did. I bought a lot of clamps that turned out to be junk. And let's talk about it. The first set is these here, which both of these I got at a yard sale. They're these bar style clamps. And as soon as you start getting any type of clamping pressure on anything, they start slipping. They don't, they don't hold or clamp down with any more pressure. Um, so that was kind of a bad purchase. I bought, I don't know, like eight or 10 of these things. I think it was somewhere around like 50, 60 bucks for the whole lot of them. Um, just didn't seem like a bad deal at the time after looking at clamp prices whenever you go to the store and look on the rack. So then I ended up buying these, which were newer clamps, and these were a Harbor Freight deal, I think. It's Pittsburgh clamps. Um, same thing. They they slip. They turn out to be worthless. And, and the thing is, I bought like six of these, too, so that, that ended up being just as big of a waste of money. The only ones that style that, that don't have any grooves in the bar that, that has seemed to have worked for me is the Irwin clamps, believe it or not. They, they're... they're uh, a low special um and they they seem to work i haven't had them slip at least not much I, I, i've had a slip a time or two but not much these here on the other hand which is a harbor freight uh clamp they have these little notches grooved into the bar on the back and the front side and they stay put like you you tighten them up and then you screw them down and they they just build pressure, and that's that's all they do for a living. They just build clamping pressure. They, they've been awesome. Um, another clamp that's awesome and I use almost probably more than anything um, is this style of clamp. And there's two different brands here. One of them's Pittsburgh. The other one's, I don't even know. It's We got light blue and we got darker blue. Um, the darker blue ones, I think these are the Lowe's brand. They don't twist very much, where the uh, Pittsburgh clamps, the, the frame of them twist whenever you start get, building clamping pressure and it starts to turn on your piece a little bit. And sometimes that can be hard to keep everything aligned properly whenever that's hot. Um, another go-to was the uh, Bessie clamps that go on the three quarter inch pipes. They are expensive but they are good. I've never had them slip. Now, the Amazon Chinese special that looks like them, I've had these slip. I've had these slip a couple times and I couldn't get them to tighten down. They just kept on slipping where they were slipping. And it's very frustrating when that happens. But yeah, all of these are clamps that if you're making cutting boards, you're probably gonna look at all these options to get I would recommend the Bessie pipe clamps and pretty much any style clamp that has these where they screw in tighter and they have these little notches here that hold this here still so that it has no choice but to build pressure. And that's, that's what it does. It builds pressure for days and does great. Um, and the Irwin clamps, I've, I've used these in all sorts of different situations. When I get to clamping up the board, if I got some awkward glue up from some awkward design, sometimes I'll come across the top of one of these and try to get somewhere where I don't have clamping pressure at, and uh, they work pretty well. Same with these. Remember, these are the ones with the notches in the bar. Um, yeah, I've never had them slip, but all of these, that's, that's a big waste of money, and it, that sucked. But yeah, yeah. And then there is this drawer that is full of all sorts of different clamps. I got bandy clamps, which uh, goes back to my my uh, cabinetry aspirations. Um, someday I'll get into them a good bit. Get those out of the way because they're taking up the top. And I got these big old uh, clamps that have levels on them. That was an impulse buy. Don't know why I got them, um, but they they looked like they would probably be useful in some situation. I've been doing this hobby for a couple years now, and I have not found that situation, but uh, I have them just in case it pops up. I got a couple of them. Uh, I got 
got these, got a corner clamp here. Uh, never used it in my life. I've, I've clamped together some corners uh, multiple times, but I've never used this, so that's a waste of money. Uh, and then I got these, which these, we've discussed them over there with the other clamps. Um, it has these grooves on both sides, and you just kind of push it together. And it does not slip. It just builds pressure for days. Like, like that's its job or something. Like somebody made it specifically to build clamping pressure. Who would have thought? But yeah, they, they these things, you pick them up at Harbor Freight for like three bucks a piece. So I, I got a bunch of them. Um, there's a bunch more running around here somewhere. I don't know where they're at, but I got a bunch of them. And then we got these uh, box clamps. I haven't used them yet. They're actually pretty new to me. Um, they're basically ratchet straps made for woodworking and I, I think, um, I think the ratchet strap would have been just as good. Um, but I do have these. Um, I, I'm actually going to use them the next time I use them. And then I got a bunch of these clamps, which I do use them pretty regularly that, it, that comes up. Then we got the, uh, pocket hole clamps, which, uh. You basically stick this end in a pocket hole and this end goes in another piece of wood and it just holds them together. I've used them. They're, they're pretty handy. Um, then you got these here. I think I, I saw them on Wish.com one day and they were an impulse buy too. And as you can see, I can just keep on plugging that away and it never stops me from trying to build more pressure because it keeps on slipping. It's slipping. It's... Uh, a waste of money but you know fortunately it was on wish.com and other than waiting for it for three months it didn't cost me a dime well it cost me a couple of dimes anyway you know wish wishing free but it's and then we got uh these corner clamps which are pretty nifty Whoop. if i can figure out how to use them you uh put that on a corner and it'll hold a corner together like that um i plan on using them i haven't used them yet but that, there's some situations that i think i could have used them in but uh i didn't have them and now i have them and i'm waiting for those situations to come up again and i'll use them then of course i got even smaller clamps here um yeah they come in handy sometimes as well uh, what else do I have here? Oh, let's see. There's another uh, box clamp thing. Thing of Medusier. I've tried using these a couple times, and they're they're kind of chaotic to use. They're they they yeah. You almost need like four hands to be able to use them correctly. Um, so I, I don't really use them anymore. I kind of use uh, painters tape a lot for my boxes and stuff like that and then here's like one oddball Irwin clamp that you know because it's like four times as much as these these you get them at uh harbor freight like i don't know like 10 bucks a dozen they're, they're pretty cheap pretty easy to get and uh they're, they're definitely worth it but yeah that's that's my clamping experience i've, I've wasted a ton of money on clamps um because a lot of these have turned out to be just useless. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's that's one thing. I wish I could snap my fingers and these clamps just turn into the money that I wasted on them. That would be awesome. But uh, I can't do that. So uh, yeah, we'll just uh, stare at them and complain about them for a while. Alright, off to the next thing. This guy right here, scroll saw. Uh, it's It's... A good addition to the shop. I, I've used it a good bit. It, uh, it's it been very helpful. I do need new blades for it. Um, yeah, I broke the last blade in a couple projects ago. And uh, I haven't bought a new set of blades yet. Well, I did buy another set of blades, but they were the wrong size. So my bad, I guess. Um, so yeah, I need to get new blades for it and get it back to use. Um, but yeah, that's that's been a good purchase too. Especially when I had the... The nine-inch bandsaw that that wouldn't cut anything. That thing there basically did uh, all my bandsaw work for a while, which is kind of ridiculous. But yeah, yeah, get yourself one of them. 
But yeah, Saul's, um, this here was a wish purchase that I thought would be um, awesome. I think this is the one that made me delete that app. It might have been this one or it might have been this one. One of these, both of them I bought thinking that they were going to be something in there. They're, they're junk. Um, I don't know why I still have them. I seem to say that a lot too. Um, this saw here, I use it a good bit. Um, yeah, it, it's good for cutting uh, some awkward curves and stuff, especially like if you're doing some trimming stuff. Uh, this here's a dovetail saw. Uh, I never used that. Um, I, I would like to get into dovetail, so someday I'm going to be using that. Then we got our flush cut uh, Japanese pool saws and stuff. Uh, and this guy here, uh, and that guy, which that guy there is kind of used and abused, but this guy here, I use it more often than anything, a Japanese pool saw. When I'm, when I'm doing hand saw work, it's this one here. That's the way to go. Um, there's a lot of the saws that I have in the shop, like the band saw and stuff. I mean, you can do a lot of the work with the hand saws and rather than going in purchasing, uh, a big ticket item with a couple hundred dollar saw if you want to these things here like i mean you will you're talking about 15 to 30 bucks a piece whenever you're you're buying hand saws so it's not too big of a deal to get them spindle sander i really thought that this was going to change the game in this shop but uh i don't use it very much but i will say at the times I use it, it's it's second to none. Like it, there's there's nothing that would have done what I've done with this. Uh, um, yeah, other than hand sanding, th this thing has saved me a lot of work in some situations. But fortunately, it's like a hundred and thirty dollar, hundred forty dollar, something like that uh, spindle sander. So it's not like it it's going to break the bank, but. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really get a lot of use out of it. But when I do, it's it's pretty important that I used it. So, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of torn. Uh, you you make the decision. Do you want one or not? Talk about measuring devices and stuff like that. I mean, this here was an impulse buy. It's one of them things you see on on some Facebook video where some talented. Uh, uh, talented a construction worker uses it to come up with some shape um i've never used it um so yeah but it's there i've got some some tools to find angles and stuff I, I have used these i think they are valuable to have but yeah it's still kind of a tool that like i impulse bought most of this stuff and some of it has come in handy but i i think with measuring tools and stuff you should just buy it as your project's going to need it because uh yeah you'll end up impulse buying and getting some stuff that you'll never use um these are my corner clamps uh these are actually relatively new i haven't had a chance to use it but i do plan on using that these this here's my my uh circle do flinky um have never used it here's another circle do flinky um, it, it draws a line uh, in a circle um, I have used it so it's it's come in handy um, this guy here has come very in handy it's great for measuring or setting depth of stuff so yeah that's that's been a plus uh, tire pressure gauge uh, I don't know that you're going to need that in a wood shop uh, moisture meter. This thing is cheap. It's basically only going to tell me what the moisture is on the surface. There's like four and eight hundred dollar meters that that do a lot better at at uh, reading the the moisture through out the piece of wood. But this here, it it'll get you a start. Um, of course, your levels. I mean, I got like four of them in here. This guy here has been really good for uh, measuring depth of stuff too. Um, yeah it's been been awesome um you did a good bit speed square i use this thing all the time all the time um not for all the the good awesome stuff that you can use it for but i use it all the time just trying to get a straight line across a board that's my gauge too right there of course you got your six inch rule and i got a 12 inch rule uh they're they're handy all the time more uh angle finding 
devices. I use them a good bit. Um, yeah. Then this guy here has been awesome, especially for um, for setting the, the uh, level of the table on my uh, jointer. This thing here is really come in handy for that. Um, sitting here waving it around now it's confused as to where it's at. Um, of course we got stud finders so it don't find me so I don't think it works. Um, tape measures. Um, tape measures I try not to mix tape measures on projects and, and I'll, I'll tell you why because 12 inches on every tape measure is not the same. I mean, some of them are, are off by as much as a half an inch from each other. So I use the same tape measure the whole way through a project. That way everything fits together perfectly. Um, yeah. And then here's a caliper, which tells you how how big an opening is on this side and or how thick something is right here. I've used that. That comes in handy sometimes. Um, yeah. And I got some electrical stuff in here that probably isn't needed in a wood shop, but I have it. Uh, yeah. Measuring devices. Good fun. The thing I have is a junk drawer, just random tools. I got my scrapers in here. I got a lot of my knives and blades, which probably shouldn't have my blades just open laying in there just for like safety reasons. But I do because, you know, I, I live life on the edge sometimes. Another pair of scissors. Uh, got some scrapers here. A uh, little bit of side cutters or dikes or whatever you want to call these things. There's a lot of names for them. Uh, channel locks, more of them. Uh, got some adjustables, some pliers, screwdrivers, all sorts of screwdrivers. Uh, got a uh, wire brush. Sometimes that comes in handy. I got uh, one of the marker knives for yeah marking out a piece. Um, so when you you get bored of using a pencil, you can use one of these. Uh, it looks pretty good. Um, yeah, and it helps out with some chisel work too because it, it gets gets you started by cutting uh, a groove through the grain. Some utility knives. Yeah, the card scrapers, um, card scrapers, let me see if I can find a good example, this one, I use this sucker all the time, scraping off glue and trying to straighten out, straighten out some, some lines and stuff, I, I use this all the time, and it is great, um, yeah. Uh, I got some Allen wrenches for whatever reason I need them in the shop. Uh, flashlight. Oh, the batteries are dead. Well, that's not cool. Um, yeah, it's basically a junk drawer. Pretty much what I said this. Bunch of junk. And these are all my sanders. It's kind of my sanding drawer. I got. Um, Grind, grinders here. I got the palm sander. I once I got an orbital sander. I never touched the palm sander again. My orbital sander is cheap, and and it is the the go-to sander that I use for everything. I got a belt sander. I got another belt sander. I think that one's bad. I don't know why I don't throw away the bad stuff, but I don't for some reason. And I've got a uh, planer. Uh, it's kind of a hand planer. It functions like a jointer, but it, it's it works like a uh, like a sander. But it it works kind of like a hand plane too. Like that's kind of I think what it's designed to be is like a hand plane. But I, I never use that either for some reason. Then I got a jigsaw. Um, I don't use this very much. It's kind of a rare situation where. When you need to use it, it's the only tool for the job. I, I don't regret this purchase. It's a good purchase. Actually, when I was a kid, I hurt myself on one of these um, in shop class back in like high school. Um, what I was doing was just running a small piece through it, like something you would normally run through a scroll saw. 
or or not a scroll saw, nothing at all. It was it was so small. I had no business cutting it with machinery at all. Um, but I was trying to run it through there, and it, and it grabbed a hold of it, and it pulled my thumb in it and cut across my thumb a good bit. Um, you can't really tell because it's all dusty, but I still have a scar there to this day. So yeah, that's that's my experience with that. But then there's this guy here, which is, you know, that's my my panel ripper. I <laughs> I do a lot of uh, cutting up, um, cutting up plywood with this thing. Uh, yeah, because my table saw, and when I try to push plywood across my table saw, it tries to flip the table saw over. So I, I go to this a lot. Which is, yeah, I need to upgrade my table saw sometime. Oh, I forgot about this in the measuring devices, but this guy right here is, yeah, I've used this a lot actually. Um, yeah another useful tool to have around then there's routers i got my big router that i keep in my router table uh, it's a pretty cheap router table it's not like one of them big built-in router tables which someday i'm going to get one of them and then i'll have a build video for that for you um then i have my hand router which i use for small things i mean they're they're they both have way drastically different purposes um but yeah i, I recommend having both of these if you have the funds to get both. Um, they, yeah, I use them a lot. Um, yeah, and and make sure you exercise caution with these because they can get out of hand. They're one of the more dangerous tools in your shop. This is cart. It's a cart. I bought this because sometimes when you get to cutting a bunch of pieces and you're moving them around from the jointer to the the chop saw or or back to the planer, um, you, you end up needing needing more than two hands to move them around or you just need a place to put those pieces to uh like as you work them through because you just don't have any place to put them over there um so i bought this and then my shop it got kind of crunched and kind of smaller and smaller as i bought more and more tools and this thing became useless and now it's just a, a catch-all for stuff keep my safety glasses in there one of my dozen pairs of safety glasses. But yeah, if you got a big shop, a cart is, is definitely useful. This is a shop car. It's a car. I parked it there like six years ago. It was a perfectly good car. And I just I just parked it in here and never used it again. Um, so yeah, now the used car prices are, are through the roof. I think I need to pull it out, dust it off, clean it up. Get running again make sure everything's all right maybe drive it around for a couple of weeks and put it on the market because i need to get rid of it all all it's serving is 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 uh a board for my girlfriend to write little notes to me every once in a while like she wrote up here a little dust never hurt anyone and uh i'm a good dirty girl and uh i am a bad can't say that this is a family app uh and pete can't say that this is a family app. We'll hide that. Then over here I got a shop vac, which I would be doing you a huge disservice if I didn't tell you you should get a shop vac. I started out with uh, a little cheap uh, shop vac that I got at Lowe's. It basically sits on top of a five gallon bucket and the five gallon bucket is it what holds all the dirt. Um, that worked fine. Um, but I ended up finding this rigid in an auction recently. So I jumped on top of that because, you know, it's a good vacuum for about 50 bucks. And then I also have an air compressor. Um, yeah, the air compressor has been a big help in the shop as far as air tools. Um, yeah, air tools is great if you can get them. I also have air hose that you see on the floor. Um, yeah, there's 50 foot of it there, just, just laying on the floor being a trip hazard. That's the way it always is because I don't really have a good place to put it because I've never taken the time to uh, make a place to put it, uh, to roll it up and hang it. It'd be nice to get a air hose uh, roller so that I can pull it out and have it sucked back up in there someday. Yeah, maybe that's going to be one of the improvements I do here soon. Uh but yeah, I don't recommend doing what I do. That's that's kind of silly. It's amazing that I haven't tripped myself, hurt myself 
the way I keep things around here. And then here is Mr. Drill Press. This here has been, um, I've used this a ton in this shop. Uh, everything, I can't really, really point to individual projects that, that you'd use it on because you use it on almost everything that you can drill a hole in and you want a perfectly straight hole. Um, but yeah, it, it's been, it's been awesome. But yeah, that's, that's the gist of my shop tour. I'm sure I missed a couple of things. I, I know I've missed a couple of things, but you know, there's only so much you can squeeze into a, a properly length uh, YouTube video. Um, can't be getting too small into the details, but there's a lot of purchase mistakes I made along the way. I, I think I covered most of the big ones there. Um, and there's, there's, there's a couple of things that I'm, I'm really happy with, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure some of them will turn out to be mistakes somewhere along the line too. But, uh, here in the future, I plan on investing pretty heavily in this shop and trying to go from basically a rookie level shop to, uh, to a semi-professional shop. There's a couple, a couple things I want to do. I want to get a, uh, an upgraded table saw because I, I, even though I've had my little run in with it, uh, I can still see that thing hurting me someday the way with as rickety as it is. But, uh, I, I also want to get a drum sander so that I'm not using my, my planer for some of the things that I'm using it for some of the really thin strips of wood I'm thinning out, uh, through the planer, it, it gets kind of sketchy when some of them chip out a little bit. So I want to get a drum sander to, to take some of that uh, workload off of off of the planer. Um, I'd like to get an edge sander uh, as well. Uh, there's been a couple projects, I mean, not a lot, but there's been a couple projects where an edge sander would have made a world of difference in, in both the safety of doing the project and, and the efficiency of it. Um, I also, and probably the most important thing is is dust collection. I need to work on dust collection. I, this shop gets way too dusty. Um, it's bad for my health, even though I, I do pretty good at wearing a respirator and stuff and, and stuff like that. Just, but when I don't wear one and I'm out here moving stuff around, like making this video as I'm moving equipment around, I, I'm stirring up dust and I'm bringing it in. I'm going to go blow some brown bookers out here after this. Um, so yeah, dust collection to try to knock that down. If I get that installed, then I need to do a big deep cleaning in this shop. And, and I want to get one of those uh, air purifiers for woodworking shops that you hang up on the ceiling. Um, get one of those as well to try to help out with that too. Um, because, you know, I'd like to do this uh, long term and I would also like to live long term. So I want to take care of my lungs by... Uh, making sure I get proper dust collection and air ventilation and air purifying in this shop. Um, so yeah, there, there's, a, there's a good bit of stuff I wanna do around here. I wanna improve the windows so that my neighbors don't get annoyed with me and being in here running saws all the time. So I'm gonna improve the windows to try to help out with uh, soundproofing some stuff. And, uh, and I also want to heat and cool the shop because I live here in Pennsylvania. So we have pretty big hot days in the summer where we, we probably have about 30 days a year where we're over 90 degrees around here. But then in the winter time, we have probably 30 days a year where we're uh, under 25 degrees. Um, so we have pretty extreme imbalanced weather here. So I'd like to have a little bit of a heat and AC system, probably going to be one of them giant window units. Um, something that just knocks the cold out a little bit and knocks the heat off a little bit. I'd like to be able to keep it between 80 degrees and, and 50 degrees if I can. That's kind of the goal. But uh, come come back around another year and I might make another one of these videos and you can compare the progress then. Hopefully, hopefully I make a good bit of progress. <laughs> because uh, I'm calling it here. I'm going to make some progress by next year with this shop. But yeah, uh, if you like that video, then uh, go ahead and give us a like. And uh, if you have any suggestions, because like I said, I plan on uh, improving some of my equipment and improving my shop. If you have any suggestions for me at all, uh, let me know in the comments below. Um, like what brand of tools you went for, uh, what, what uh, 
what size um, um, dust collection system do you think I should go for? Um, yeah, I'd like to know how much air this system needs to move. Like, like what do you guys run in your shop? Um, yeah, and, and if you have any more uh, suggestions for new woodworkers, like any tools that you don't see me working with, um, that you think they should work with and, and learn how to use, or think that I should learn how to use, uh, drop it in the comments below. I'll, I'll read them all. I might respond to it, I might just give it a thumbs up. Um, but, but I will read them all. Um, yeah, it's just, just beat up them comments below and let me know. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to follow along with my progress and see more videos from me, uh, hit that subscribe button and, uh, and follow along. Uh, I plan on keeping on posting. Uh, we'll see how this goes. But uh, until next time, make something awesome.